Hello YouTube viewers, welcome to my channel Science to Technology. In today's show, Computer Wednesday, we're going to talk about portable storage. So let's dive deep into it. Now, why exactly do we need this sort of thing? Well, uh, reality is data is the key. You may think computer is expensive, computer is nothing. Computer is what we call chump change. What is important in that computer is the data. Meaning if you take a server and you boom the server, as long as data is safe, companies will be like, yeah, minor inconvenience. If you boom the data and server is intact, yeah, they're gonna have a panic attack. So do understand it, data is the key here. Now, many times we need to transport the data from A to B, person to person. And all the time you may not have the luxury of local area network may not have the luxury of having high enough bandwidth in terms of uh, internet or cap to transfer large enough file so, so for that reason for everyday use many time we need something that is small easy to carry and can carry forward enough data for our day-to-day -day use so to say it's not for like serious use but for day-to-day -day use so we want something that is portable storage with read and write now optical disc like cd dvd blu-ray quad layer blu-ray these puppies are powerful capable also but they are not what we call uh, read and write they are inherently not designed for that like some engineers have figured it out but they are not designed for that specifically blu-ray like uh, if that puppy is designed as a warm medium write once read many so that's why I'm not considering optical disc as a like proper, uh, you know, day to day use kind of scenario. So we start with our uh, journey with floppy disk. Like these puppies were very successful and uh, they used to carry some stuff around. What sort of stuff? Well, uh, have you ever heard that nuclear launch codes were stored on floppy drive? Yeah, that big daddy actually used to store biggest daddy of them all. Be mindful, the bigger ones are far more reliable, smaller ones are like uh, they started to go down in quality. So smallest one that we use the, as a save icon, that's the worst one of them in terms of reliability. In terms of capacity, smallest is the best, but in terms of reliability, it's lol. So we used to have big puppies, then we had 5 inch puppy that became the de facto standard of around uh, late 70s to 90s. Then we slowly switched to uh, 2.5 inch, uh, why I'm saying 2.5, 3.5 inch and then uh, Floppy drive was like de facto standard, that's why it's the save icon. And then we, uh, some other companies also try other design where they're like, what if we take the hard drive and remove the platter from it? So zip disk was created. It was also very successful. Other companies also tried many other designs, but overall these two puppies were very successful and floppy drive was the daddy. So this is how we started. Then we come to the, you know, current champion. Pen drives. Now, pen drives hit the market in late 2000, as in they are 23 years old. Now, they started very small, very humble. They started around 8 megabytes in capacity. Whoa! Now, be mindful, it was still whoa compared to floppy drive, so it was really good. And they, nowadays, you can easily cross 5 to 12 gigabytes. Be mindful, it does not make sense to have it, but you can buy it if you desire it. Now, uh, the biggest benefit of this puppy, basically having USB pen drive, is that it is the reason why we have USB as a standard for computer preference. Because if you're old enough or if you have access to old computers like in a banks or things of that nature, you may find that there used to be a port for printer. There used to be a port for keyboard, for mouse. Everything was separate. Everything had its own dedicated connection interface. However, USB, universal serial bus, Again, every people wanted something like USB, but there was like, you know, chicken and egg scenario. Like you make something, but people have to buy, buy new hardware. So you have to give something that is genuinely unique for people to like, okay, I'm gonna invest on it. So if you're like, hey, this new port in new keyboard, you're like, so I have to upgrade my old computer so I can connect the old hardware. They're like, no. But this puppy was the hotness. So people just jump into it. And over time, as in like as early as 2000, over time, as in like by 2005, USB was the king. By 2010, people forgot there used to be other things. So it started small, but right now, uh, if for example, let's say you went to Microsoft store and you're like, hey, I want a physical copy of Microsoft uh, for operating system, whatever have you. And again, it does make sense. How the heck you're gonna install uh, operating system from internet if there is no operating system or your brand new system? they will still sell you a pen drive. Like this is uh, used to be uh, something that I used to see uh, in my studio and institute. Uh, they used to have Autodesk Maya, Autodesk Max, these sort of software and the Autodesk company sells you the sort of pen drive. They will give you a box and that, of course the software can be downloaded from online, but again, you have to understand this. Many places still do not have very high speed, um, you know, internet and having physical copy also gives you a certain level of peace of mind. And we are human, we kind of like those sort of thing. And be mindful, even DaVinci Resolve comes in a pen drive if you want to. So you can pay for the license and have the pen drive. And if you are actually paying for them, it's like, it's one of those things where it's like, dude, do I really want to like, you know, risk not having anything? Because again, internet does go down. It's one of those things. So having a pen drive, 
having this sort of system, especially for operating system. That's a, like, this I can get, like, this are extra. This is important puppy. You can buy that right now. So it started small, but it's very big. And throughout day-to-day -day use, it was king from around, let's say, 2005 to 2015. And uh, we all, I can guarantee it, everybody who's watching my uh, basically video must have used one pen drive or another or multiple pen drive at some point in life. For example, my first pen drive was around 8 gigabyte. And that was the back in the day where we did not even add format structure for it. Meaning if you try to transfer file larger than 4 gigabyte, it used to throw up an error, FAT32 error. So it was then we had to create NTFS pen drive mountings. Then then we jumped to 32 gigabyte, I still using this puppy. Then we have 128 gigabyte, the current puppy. So pen drive is one of those things that changed the computer industry forever. Like you may think like USB is cool now, before pen drive, it wasn't cool. So USB made everything cool because of pen drives. So pen drives, that's how we started. Then the birth of USB 3.0 happened. Now, this is a very big jump, why? Because we had 2.5 inch hard drives. Now these puppies are big, capable, and we were running our laptops on this puppy for like, you know, as early as 90s. So issue was that nobody had figured out how to, you know, enclose it in somewhere and give you USB 2.0. Why? They did. But problem was, if you give the maximum capacity possible, the USB 2.0 becomes the bottleneck. For example, this is a 4.5 terabyte. Like again, it says 5 terabytes, but I get around 4.5 terabytes of usable space. If I transfer at ludicrous speed that nobody ever actually managed to get reliably long enough, 40 Mbps, uh, that means I need 31 hours of use time in order to extract all the data from here. And that's not unreasonable to expect. If you have large, uh, you know, uh, storage requirement, that means you have large storage requirement. Nobody is gonna buy four terabyte and it's like, oh, I'm only filling up one terabyte of it, uh, bro. Then buy two terabyte one. You always want some buffer. So if you have four terabyte, you need a way of like, you know, dumping and extracting the file. That's why I said large capacity pen drive does not make that much sense. So that was the biggest limitation. So smart engineers got together, they made USB 3.0. Now this puppy took 480 Mbps and multiplied it by 10, 4.8 Gbps. What does that mean? What does it translate to? It translates to around 600 megabytes per second. Now, why is that important? Well, somebody figured out we had SATA interface on computers. Uh, basically, that's how hard drives used to connect. And uh, SATA also went through multiple iterations. So it started with 150 Mbps, then jumped to 300 Mbps, then jumped to 600 Mbps. So SATA 3. Now SATA 3 was the bottleneck, fundamentally speaking. Inside your computer, what was the slowest link? Uh, if you're not talking about PCI, be mindful. In, back in those days, NVMe was not created. So how your hard drive was connected, even if it was SSD, it was connected by SATA 3. So fundamentally, 600 Mbps was the theoretical maximum a computer could have. So if your external port can dump data at that rate, you reached equilibrium, meaning you will not have bottleneck. So that was a very big thing. And this is the time where this puppy started to become normal things. It used to be made, it used to be sold, but it was like, eh, you know, but the moment three, uh, you know, USB 3.0 came, it no longer was the bottleneck. Meaning if you had an internal hard drive, dumping data to external hard drive using USB interface, the speed will be limited by the slowest link, which it could be either the small one or the big one, but it won't be the link. Link won't be the choking point. So if your hard drive can dump only at, let's say, 80 Mbps, you can use 80 Mbps. If your hard drive can dump up to 200 Mbps, it can absorb 200 Mbps. So link limitation was removed. So it was a very big thing. And this is the time where pen drive died, meaning I'm reasonably sure most of you do not think about pen drive anymore, even though it was a very important back in the day. We don't think about it. And the only time people think about it is like when they have to install operating system. So what the hell happened? Well, this happened. This is a... This pen drive, Sanders pen drive, uh, this design basically. So to reduce cost and keep size small, be mindful, if you make something small, does not always mean it's a good thing. Many times making something small means compromises and compromise here is speed. So what does that mean? That means even though the link speed is very high, uh, handshake, basically the handshake between the computer and the memory control here is very awesome, is that it does not have the capacity to absorb that sort of speed. So it's like you dump file, it goes into small cache. The cache is around one gigabyte or something like that. Uh, and then you dump file. So you feel awesome speed, like, you know, 80, 90 Mbps. The moment that cache overflows, meaning you are dumping a large video file, it starts to go down. And then it's like uh, back to USB 2.0. Like you can see 36 Mbps. 
what the hell <laughs> you bought usb 3.0 you will on the box it will say usb 3.0 or 600 mbps but you will get 36 mbps what the hell happened this is the reason why many people have such a bad rip memory of usb 3.0 usb sticks because the usb 3 sticks that are actually capable of using the speed even to give you as little as let's say 150 mbps because at that point there is a good chance you are at equilibrium with your internal mechanical hard drive uh, those were very very expensive so pen drive diet and at that point in time it's like if pen drive is slow why not you just use the mechanical system and at least enjoy the benefit of capacity so this became successful this slowly died out and uh, that was the end of pen drive era because of usb 3.0 which was 5 gbps of around 600 mbps then we come to the ssd era now ssds can easily cross the limitation of 80 mbps or 250 mbps however i have never had any physical hard drive that actually goes that fast do you any have you any actually any one of you actually used a mechanical spinning hard drive that actually sustains that 250 mbps i'm not talking about small bursts that it can do for from cash i'm talking about like some big daddy data dumps can it sustain it or does it require to have like very high capacity the highest capacity mechanical i have is like around 4 terabytes so maybe that's the limitation factor but i've never seen that speed people say that you can go up to that but i have never seen it but it is what it is um, like you know this puppy can easily give 60 to 80 to 90 sustained so usb 5 can now be crossed meaning once you have ssd era that uh, people are jumping from sata to nvme now you have completely no bottleneck so now people are like hey 5 gbps is not that awesome we need something more so they are jumping to 10 gbps now something interesting happened this time Cameras became big daddy, meaning even super cheap cameras started to give you raw formats or ProRes formats. And these formats consume memory like there is no tomorrow. Now, what about SD card? It cannot handle it. The read and write speed is just too slow. So what do people do? People create some random card format known as Compact Flash uh, CFast XY, which is NVMe packed into a small package. Awesome. Here's the deal. It's hyper expensive, meaning price dollar per gigabyte is super duper high, meaning it's stupid, meaning most people can't buy it. Even if they can buy the camera, they cannot buy a card large enough to put into it. So some camera manufacturers had brain. So they used the brain and they figured it out. Hey, what if we have USB-C port? What if we dumped data, the video data directly in that USB-C port and let people figure out what to do after that? And voila, companies were like, hey, you know, we have SATA 3 SSDs. What if we remove the SATA controller, dump a um, USB controller, and voila, we have a proper SSD that you can plug using USB-C. And because of uh, uh, development in flash chips, the energy consumption is very low. So a mobile uh, equipment can actually power these puppy and dump file at very high speed. And this explodes in uh, basically popularity. Be it Panasonic, be it Black Magic, everybody is like, dude, this is the way. This is how it's supposed to be. Rather than, you know, going bankrupt buying cards, because be mindful, these cards, please Google the price. Please Google the price of Sony's uh, proprietary BS, that is Compact Flash Association, uh, basically CFast Express Type A. They could have used Type B, which, mind, which mindful, they built, like XQD standard was built by Sony. They did not use their own standard. So that was card. You cannot even buy one terabyte variant of it. And you're like, do we need that? Yeah. When you're recording at like, you know, hundreds of giga, uh, you know, megabytes per second, you need that sort of speed and capacity. And you cannot get neither the speed nor the capacity. So external drive was the easiest solution. And this also gave the vendors, basically, uh, SanDisk and Samsung, the, you know, ability to design their stuff. But if SanDisk went the, uh, you know, pro route where they're like, no, our stuff is robust. It's waterproof. It's, uh, you know, elegant. And then Samsung went to the right. It's like sleek and very cool because, again, metal body. But it does not survive the dings and dangs very efficiently. But it it became the backbone for many people who are using black magic they're not even using the card slot they may not even remember which card slot it has they're like just plug the ssd awesome i just wish somebody uh, like gave this brain to sony panasonic and canon i just hope a man can hope and video editors especially for people who are apple only uh, apple is awesome unless you have to use it and at that point in time where it's like ah uh, the internal hard drive or the SSD NVMe, you cannot upgrade it. Even though you could have bought it, let's say in 2016, and you are like, hey, I'm perfectly happy with this in, let's say 2020. So few years have passed and you're like, exponentially more higher capacity is available now. You cannot buy it. So God help you if you have bought something that is like, let's say 512, 
uh, GB in capacity. You are limited to that. You cannot do anything. So they are also using this because thankfully at least they had Thunderbolt and uh, USB, uh, you know, 3.0, 10 Gbps ports. So they are dumping data directly editing on these things. So many video editors who are doing travel vlogging, they have to use laptops. They are using this puppy to do video editing. So because of that ecosystem, this thing became the backbone. And that's why you will see this everywhere, be it Amazon, be it Flipkart, be it Best Buy, be it whatever have you. These things became very, very awesome. They are fast, meaning they exceed that SATA 3 limitation. So they actually give you read and write speed of around a gigabyte per second. And they are very robust, meaning though both of these puppies are like, if you drop them, it's, they are not fragile as this puppy. They're like, no, if it drops, you're like, I got this. It's not too weird. they are robust, but they are expensive. Be mindful, this is a completely custom built system. So they are expensive. That's the penalty. They're expensive. But as the, you know, math engineering says, you can have cheap, you can have fast, you cannot have uh, like, you know, good. You have to choose two. Either it's good and fast, either it's, uh, you know, good and cheap, but it cannot be fast. So you always have to choose two. So this puppy is like, okay, cost is no object. You are willing to pay for it. And for, again, for the people who use this, it's like, shut up, take money. So this is awesome. And this is right now our backbone of it, of our portable storage needs. Then we come to the DIY aspect, meaning this puppy. I bought this and here's the deal. What if your money is tight? Let's say you do not have GG amounts of money or you have very specific needs. Both of these scenario create a situation where you're like, hmm, something is not right or you desire something else. At that point in time, um, you may find DIY option to be viable. And it also helps you if you have spare parts. For example, let's say you had a system and upgrade. Like for one of my experiments, I tried to build a NAS survey. It did not work out as I expected. So I had a basically spare SATA 3 uh, SSD. Now this puppy is not the latest and greatest of SATA. Basically this is crucial BX500, uh, not the latest and greatest, but it has good speed, read and write speed. Around I get on SATA interface, I get around uh, 450. So it's surprisingly good, competent, almost maxing out what I can practically get. So it's really good, but I had this as a spare. And I had pen drives, but again this pen drive is gibberish because even though it's 128 gigabyte, and I can only dump file in and out at like around 40 Mbps, USB 2.0. But this puppy, if connected with this interface, basically that device, I can dump file at very, very high speed. And because this is NVM, um, basically SATA, it does not consume too much power also. So you can have this and this gives me around 300 Mbps. Now be mindful, other people who have bought this, they have got better speed. I do not know whether this uh, system is not working too well with my design, but I'm happy with it because again, 300 Mbps exceeds my main mechanical storage. And main mechanical storage is where I store big files. So it's more or less evens out for me. So I had a spare system. I bought this, this is 700 rupees, like few dollars. And it's actually the expensive model because I wanted USB-C. I did not want it to have this, uh, you know, micro B port. Uh, yeah, oversized micro B port. I just hate this puppy. So I was like, okay, I'm willing to spend a little bit more, like few cents more, just so I can have USB-C. I like this brand. They actually had the option. It's like the cheapest option. If you're like, I want to be as cheap as possible, go with old design. And it's like, hey, I want a little bit more comfort. Okay, USB-C. So I like that design. So I did this and it works. I have used it. So it's a good way if you have spare SATA SSDs, you can use that or even a mechanical drive. You can still use it. It just won't be as uh, fast. So that's up to you. Then we come to another part. SATA is now retired basically. Even modern mother, mother, mother motherboards barely come with it. Unless you are dealing with server, you're not going to get that many SATA ports. So what is the replacement? Replacement is NVMe, non-volatile memory expressway. So this puppy is fast. Now, if you want to really go fast, as in like bonkersly fast, meaning exceed the limitation of 500 Mbps to uh, basically 5 Gbps to 10 Gbps or 20 Gbps or 40 Gbps, you can do that with NVMe. NVMe inherently has enough bandwidth that it gets like, I got this. Basically NVMe is so fast nowadays that I have bought a SSD. Uh, Samsung 990 Pro and that puppy can uh, write at 7 gigabytes capital B. These things are small b when I'm talking about like uh, smaller numbers generally they are capital B. So those are exponentially faster meaning this link is still the limiting factor. But again in day to day practical use these are more than fast enough meaning for most people this 10 Gbps sticks that you can buy nowadays be it from Saber and be it from uh, Orico uh, you will be more than happy and they can give you easily read and write of one gigabytes per second that is exponentially fast meaning there is very few file that you can transfer at one Gbps and be like 
is taking too long. And I'm talking about raw files from uh, cameras and that make your uh, movie files look like bitch please. So fundamentally, this is really fast. And you have choice, meaning if I like, hey, that's good, but I want better, awesome. You spend a little bit more. This is 3000, this is not dollars, rupees. 3000, uh, you spent 6000, double left. <laughs> now you go to uh, 20 GBPS, this puppies. Don't forget, be mindful, most computers have 10 GBPS port, but not all of them, specifically Apple, does not have 20 GBPS port. So you may be stuck, but uh, Windows has it. So you can spend a little bit more, get double the speed, as long as the SSD that you're putting in there is uh, fast enough. So this puppy gives you double speed. But if you're like, no, I want even more high speed, then you can spend exponentially more, around 20,000. Be mindful, this price is double. This price is, I don't even know how many doubles. It's like 8x, 20,000. This goes bonkers limiter. But this goes to 40 GPS. This is the highest you can buy. This is the Thunder, uh, Thunderbolt speed. Thunderbolt 3 or 4, both of them they have the exact same speed. So many times, Enclosure will also specify that they are Thunderbolt compatible because uh, many, um, you know, Apple laptops, they have Thunderbolt port, which can support very high speed, but they do not have USB port that can support 20 GPS. So if you like, you're stuck there. So you can buy this uh, basically either USB 4 or you can buy Thunderbolt interface and then you can have really, really high speed on Apple system also. Now, be mindful, no matter which SSD you put, no matter how awesome, even like, you know, Samsung 990 Pro Ultra, uh, you're still never gonna get full speed. Why? Uh, because you have to, there is always an overhead. When companies like, be it, uh, you know, SanDisk, be it uh, Western Digital, be it whatever have you, they build the system, they have the NAND flash, exactly same as every other device, but the controller is specifically built for that interface, meaning NAND to the USB interface is in jump, done in one go. But whenever you are building this sort of thing, there is two controllers. One controller is like the NVMe that is accessing all the NAND flash, actual storage, and another that is converting that data in and out to USB protocol. So that inherently has the what we call overhead. So meaning if your pipe is one GPS, you will lose uh, around like 10 to 20% of it. No matter what you do, you will always lose that. And this speed is directly proportional to your speed. Meaning if you buy 20 GPS one, but your SSD cannot actually max this part, do not expect it as like, oh, it's gonna be like, still I'm gonna get this, no? Overhead applies on your speed. So if you're driving slow, you will be the reason why this puppy is, even this puppy can become slow. So you have to put SSD that are like uh, really good here. Thankfully, like a Crucial uh, Pro 3 series uh, is very cheap now, like two terabyte. You can buy two terabyte. This puppy connected have really good read and write real world speed that exceeds any of the Samsung or SanDisk variant that you can buy outside. However, this will not be waterproof. SanDisk one is waterproof. So if you need waterproofing, you can go for there. But for most people, for most application, this is shut up, take my money or especially if you are upgrading something else, let's say you had old laptop, you're upgrading the NVMe and you have that NVMe stick, why throw it away? Make it into a super fast, awesome, uh, basically backup system. You can clone your hard drive into it if you need to. So these are really good option and you should really look into it. Especially if you have some custom need, where it's like, dude, most, uh, because most of the things that you can buy is still limited to 10 GPS. And you're like, dude, I would really love to have 20 GPS because I'm doing video editing on the 4K files on the device itself. You may find 20 GPS to be more desirable at that point in time, putting a high end uh, SSD or large capacity SSD, both is a viable option for you. So DIY is surprisingly viable nowadays, like surprisingly viable. So this was my presentation on portable storage mediums. Hopefully you have liked it, learned from it. In that case, please click the like button, share it amongst your friends, that will help me a lot. If you didn't like it, didn't enjoy it, I urge you to press dislike, press it twice to show me extra disappointment. Please leave a comment because I do try to reply to all of them. Subscribe, press the bell icon if you're free, and as always, thanks for watching.